comparison between Russian casualties in Ukraine and deaths because of COVID-19 can give an answer why Russian society isn't really caring that much about casualties that Russia suffer in Ukraine. COVID-19 has been affecting Russia way longer than the full-scale war in Ukraine. If we take July 24th as a reference day, then we can see that Russia lost to COVID officially more than 380,000 people. This reference day is picked because it marks five months since Russia started a full-scale invasion into Ukraine. And these official numbers are most likely not very precise and the real numbers are way higher. There have been multiple reports that Russia has been reporting way lower numbers officially than actually they have suffered. COVID-19 has been hitting Russia hard because they were focusing more on military spending instead of investing in their health infrastructure. With a little math we can see that Russia has lost in average 436 people per day since COVID appeared in Russia in early March 2020. Even when the official numbers are taken, which most likely are not exact, then we can see that the death toll is pretty high. But how high is the death toll per day in Ukraine for Russia since they started the war? Well, the problem is that Russia does not officially publish any casualty numbers that could be taken seriously even with a lot of closing of eyes. So we have to look for other sources. The highest esteem for Russian casualties in uh, Ukraine has been presented by United Kingdom. They have been estimating that Russia lost about 50,000 men since February 24th. If we divide uh, this number by 151 days, then we see that uh, Russia has lost more than 330 persons per day. But this number most likely is not accurate because there is no separation between uh, mortal casualties and wounded people. But let's take a look what Ukrainians themselves say. Ukrainians provide way more specific information compared to the British who have been uh, guessing a pretty round number. According to Ukrainians, Russia has lost 39,520 people up until that day. This number has been updated on a daily basis and because it's uh, way more specific than pretty round big number like 50,000, it can be taken as a more precise estimate. And when we take this more precise estimate and divide it uh, by the amount of days, then we come to the conclusion that Russia suffered more than 260 casualties per day. But once again, uh, this number does not show how many people actually died and how many people were injured. In this regard, a US estimate is more presentable because they announced a number of mortal casualties and of wounded soldiers and the US number is 15,000. If we divide this number then we can see that Russia lost per day a little bit less than 100 
military persons. On the lowest end of the spectrum is a Russian source. This is an independent Russian web page which only counts the confirmed identities of fallen soldiers. So only if the death of a soldier is publicly announced on social media, in a newspaper or something like that, only then this Russian page takes that person into account. And that's why they have an even preciser estimate and this is the only estimate which hasn't a zero at its end. However, this independent Russian uh, web page is very honest about the methodology behind this number and says that the real casualties are almost certainly higher than the number they present. This is more like a absolute minimum number which can't be denied because these persons are known with their names and their surnames. Well, if we take this number and divide it by the amount of days, then we come to the conclusion that Russia has lost a little bit more than 30 soldiers per day since full-scale invasion of Ukraine. If we compare all these numbers, then we see clearly that uh, the casualties that Russia suffered in Ukraine are significantly lower than the pain which was inflicted by COVID-19. And that's why Russian society has a high level of uh, acceptance towards their casualties. Large parts of Russian society have been used to COVID-19 epidemic for quite some time and uh, there is no real public outcry because of that virus. And this virus takes more lives than the war in Ukraine. Way more lives. Of course, it should be taken into account that uh, COVID-19 deaths are mostly people with chronic illnesses and elderly people. Loss of such people are easier to take for a society than the loss of young men who go into war and who have actually the entirety of their productive life in front of them. Furthermore, Russia has some serious manpower issues. They are paying a lot of money for people to go to Ukraine. And unlike the contract soldiers which were dragged into that war without knowing it, the new recruits now are completely aware that they are going to a full-scale war, but they are going by choice. Because Russia has not officially declared war, they call it a special operation and they cannot mobilize the amount of manpower they should need to mobilize if they would want to have a realistic chance of having manpower advantage in Ukraine. Because Ukraine has gone on a very intense mobilization and they have numerical advantage. Even in the field of equipment, the situation keeps turning in Ukraine's favor with Western nations supplying large amounts of money and equipment to Ukraine. So let's hope that Ukraine will win. Thanks for watching.